Howdy folks, and welcome back to my Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain FOB Defense videos. So, uh, previously I've talked a little bit about setting up your FOB, but one thing I've never mentioned, guys, if you never, ever, ever want to be attacked, then take a page out of Sun Tzu's book. Have zero online presence. If FOB Defense totally bothers you, you can always turn on the game and unaccept the terms of use agreement. Now it means you won't be able to go online and use the online features, but it also means that no one will ever ever take your stuff. So I want you guys to know and keep that in your hip pocket. If that is something that truly bothers you and you don't care about all the online features, then just unaccept the terms of use. Simple as that. Now if you do want the online swag of uh, higher developed weaponry and security devices etc, uh, plus online rewards, administrator rewards, anything under that category, well then, yeah, you're going to need to build an FOB after, ch uh, after chapter 22, and you're going to need to defend it. So, uh, going from like least to strongest, having no online presence at all will make sure that you are never attacked. If you have an FOB, but you never build it out past one platform, you will probably be attacked, but you're not really a, what I would call a rich target. Uh, if you only have one platform to speak on, that's extremely easy to invade, uh, and the but the reward then is equal to the ease of invasion. So, you know, the attacker is only going to get a few soldiers that you can easily replace, and uh, you're not exactly what I would call a tempting target. If you are interested in having a lot of men and a lot of resources and room for you know development then you are going to build out those platforms to their logical conclusion which is to four platforms uh, I have up to I have two FOBs all built out to four and the way that you increase your security level the first one is just to build those things physically out to four platforms uh, the next thing I'm going to tell you to do is to go ahead and build security devices and you have to build a few to begin with uh, and that is the IR sensor, the anti-theft device, and the surveillance cam. And automatically, soldiers from your base are going to be circulated out into those FOBs, and you can't tell which ones. Anytime your base gets invaded, if that's successful, you don't know which soldiers are going to be taken. The only thing you can do is put soldiers under direct contract that you absolutely don't want to lose. Uh, the ones I recommend are irreplaceable ones. The female soldiers, for sure. Uh, any S++ that you, you absolutely do not want to lose. Etc. Now, once you are online, you do have an FOB, and you've researched the basic security devices, you'll notice that there's these guys, and these are the ones I'm telling you to just go immediately for. The cam marking device, all right, and the D mine marker. This lets you place your own mines and cameras on your FOB. If you didn't know this already, FOB placement, uh, as far as where those platforms go, what is on those platforms, where those cameras are set up, where the sensors are set up, where your guards patrol. There is a prefab method to how those are all put together. So a really, really good attacker already knows all the guard patrol routes. They know exactly where all the camera setups are. They know which pipe to climb to avoid all the mines. Okay? They know everything except what you yourself can put out there to stop them. Okay, so this is why this gets really important. So my next step, now that you know uh, to go ahead and make these, I recommend at least getting up to rank two if you can. That lets you set up to eight mines and two cameras, which is really critical to having a really tight defense. Uh, one camera and four mines really won't cut the mustard all the time. All right, I, I would recommend at least two cameras, four mines. Uh, or excuse me, two cameras, eight mines. All right, let me hop into my FOB and I'll show you how to place these mines to give you the best defense possible. Alrighty folks, here we are. So this is my command platform, and I'm going to show you the very specific mine and camera setup to make this defense happen. So first things you're going to notice, I have three mines and one camera right here. This is on my very, very first platform. Uh, Number-wise, this would be number, number four on uh, your FOB defense. And what you want to make sure is that I want you to think about your choke points. So no matter where your opponent is going to warp in, eventually they have to cross this bridge and get to the other side. All right, and I have several of these to my command platform. Uh, originally, I had some mines and cameras set up all the way on the end, but what I found through was some really rigorous testing, and I want to give a huge, huge props and send off to uh, Charlie Cruz and especially Nathan Mayers who helped me put this video together. Uh, we literally, guys, we've been to the ringer testing all these strategies out, either by being attackers or training on my own bases after these have been set up. To tell you that these 
work, okay? And here's how. First up, I have three mines placed here. Do check the spacing. They are in line with this major line here and in line with this camera. This is to prevent people from coming underneath the camera, okay? Or coming over the edge of the railing. Now, anybody who is crawling or using the usual rolling method is going to get snookered <laughs> by these mines pretty hard. The only way past these mines is to either take the ladder to the right, this ladder over the camera, or to do some jumping insanity off of this box and onto the lower platform. Okay, Those are the only three options. So part of this three mine, one camera defense is also putting in one mine. Sorry, bud. I'm going to have to knock him over to get there. So the fourth mine goes right here. Okay, and this one's also very strategically placed. It is directly in between this pillar and this side. Okay, you can't shimmy around it, you can't crawl past it, you can't walk past it. It will detonate no matter what. So that covers the pipe insanity and this ladder approach. Okay, that leaves one last approach for an opponent to use to get past it, and that is to go the overland route. And that's actually not a bad thing. Because the other half of this strategy, and I will show you how this works. This is, by the way, if an opponent is clever enough to figure this out, because I'm telling you what, I sure didn't. Uh, it took somebody else showing me for me to learn this. The second half of the strategy takes place on this side of the bridge. We have three more mines. One is placed right here. Okay, You can kind of see that there's like a runway track up and down this bridge. This mine is placed right in front of this uh, exit, right here on the line, on the seam between this bridge. The next one is placed directly in the center. It's just a little bit to the left of the divider, okay? And then this last guy right here. Now this one is the most specific mine placement. If you look at it, it is right there on the edge of that beam. That has to be extraordinarily specific. It cannot be in front and it cannot be too far back. The effectiveness of this mine depends exactly on this crack. Okay. Now what this mine does here on the ledge, it prevents an attacker from crawling underneath. And I've tested this, Nathan Mayers has tested this, and let me tell you, it works. If you are trying to creep underneath this mine, it will blow you out into the water. If you try to crawl under the mine, it will blow up and cause a small alert. The only way past this mine is to slowly walk between them and that is why there's an extra setup of cameras here okay now this extra camera you can place it wherever you like all right but uh, having a camera there in conjunction with these three mines makes this an extremely tough setup also if your opponent decides that instead of going the overland route they would like to go under we have an identical mine in between the rail and the pipe right here okay again it must be shot at uh, to get past otherwise it will go off you can't crawl past it you can't shimmy past it also another good idea is also to set up a camera right here too if you already like the one that's up there that's naturally placed you can set a camera down here and make that one a little extra tough all right so now that we've explained where everything goes let's explain the why first up there's only two types of attackers at this point in the game anymore. Uh, because this game's been out for so long, you're only really facing two types of opponents. The new guy, who has absolutely no idea what he's doing and has never been in an FOB to base to four, and he is looking to take your load of goods. Uh, and if he's attacking a four-platform base with, level of, with my level of security, he has no idea what he's in for. Because let me tell you, I come in here with all of my stuff, and I'm dead before the first platform because I'm a terrible FOB attacker, okay? You have to be really well-trained to get past all, all the stuff in a base, all right? So the new guy who comes in is probably going to attack these mines just like you would in the normal game. Attacking the mine sets off an alert. Attacking the camera, if you use more than one bullet, sets off a soft alert. Attacking a soldier or firing near them sets off an alert. All right. I've also set the, the guards on this particular platform. All right. There's eight different places you can tell them to patrol. And I've set up the heaviest patrols right here on these four 
Okay, because there's really no reason for an attacker to go this direction. Why even have defenders there anyway? All right. Uh, so the heaviest patrolling is right here. That also has a higher likelihood of having a uh, a guard patrol up and down this ladder. All right. So what you're doing here is you're playing chess with your opponent. You're setting up a roadblock, and you're trying to make them go where you want them to go and do what you want them to do, as opposed to them coming in with their own game plan and their own strategy. And any experienced attacker has a rock-solid strategy of how to get into your base and get to the end, okay? They already know exactly where all the placements are, and what this does is try to shake them out of their game. Even if it makes them change what they do, change the timing, or tweak their thought process, that's a good thing, okay? Because that will automatically start putting them off their game. It'll also buy any defender who warps in if you're not around, uh, and another player who's online decides to try to defend your base for you, it gives them more time. Because getting around these things takes more time and more effort. Unless the bad guy is cheating his ass off, which, you know, can definitely happen. Uh, if it's just a normal player, though, one who plays by the rules, this is a very, very tough setup. All right. It will force a player to do one of those three things I mentioned on this side, which is to go down the ladder or use the pipe. It, either way, the mine below uh, prevents that. And if they do decide to go overland, all right, they're risking a guard, they're risking the UAVs, and that eventually puts them in a position where they're going to have to deal quite possibly with these three mines. Okay. Now, a critical part of this, again, is this mine. It has to be on the ledge. You're asking, but Zach, how do I get it on the ledge? I don't even know. Well, guys, let me tell you, somebody smarter than me figure this one out. All right. So check this out. If you want to get a mine on that ledge, you have to kind of fool with the way the game is designed a little bit. I look to the left, I look to the right, as soon as I look to the right, I climb up, and now I'm on the ledge, okay? It's a glitchy thing, but let me show you one more time. All right, I look to the left, I look to the right, I push the button, and now I'm up on the ledge. Then carefully inch forward or back to place that mine, all right? And you're gonna have to do that on every single one of your platforms, but trust me, the juice is worth the squeeze. All right, now guys, if you don't like this camera setup that I have here, you can also feel free to pop a camera in a place where they're not expecting it, okay? Or just reserve that camera and place it on a blind spot, okay? Another place that they're not expecting it, all right? This is what I like to call the invisible camera or invisible mind technique, where you put it in a spot that they're just not 100% aware of. Uh, places that I really like, Okay, uh, especially if you do decide to put one at the end, uh, you know what, let me pause this for a sec. I'll put one at the end and I'll give you some ideas if you want to put something on the very end of your platform. But uh, like I said, anything that you can do to slow them down and make them have to deal with these mines is your best bet. But if you do want to go a different way, I'll show you what you can do. Okay, so I'm near the end of my command platform, all right, and I'm in a slight little hallway just about one level underneath the uh, the exit to the base. All right. So here's a few ideas. If you did want to put a camera in a surprising place near the end of your platform, which is a strong move, but it's not the best move, uh, the idea behind this is that you'd be causing a last minute alert that would hopefully run out the clock. Here's some of the ideas. The first one is that there's a regular camera that's placed here. All right. It's always there and most people expect it. So one of the neat ones that I've seen online is actually somebody putting a camera right there. That one they don't expect. They creep under the first one, thinking they've gotten past it, and then this one, which is on a completely different rotational schedule, catches them and starts shooting at them, causing an alert. Really nice move. Uh, also, one platform up, there's a mine that is right here at the edge of this corner. Let me show you where that is. Players that have to deal with it usually have to creep down and either shoot at it, and then I've seen some players put a tricky little camera right there also. So that while they're dealing with that mine, there's the possibility that that camera can get one last little alert before they round the corner. Now guys, I'm just going to be straight with you. Uh, after a lot of research and testing this out myself, I'm straight up just going to say the defense at the start of the base is worth 10 times the defense at the end of your base. If somebody has already gotten past your first three platforms, there's a really good, or excuse me, their, your first platform and all the defenses here, then there's a really good chance that they know how to get all the way through, either by wearing out and shooting down all your defenses. I've seen some amazing snipers who can take guys out from a platform away. 
You know, if they're an experienced attacker with high grade guns, they can do it. All right. So anything you can do to stop them on the first platform and get your long range defenses in check and in play and shooting at them is definitely the better way to go. You want to make this as tough as possible for them to slog their way to the edge of their base, and that should start at the front. Okay. Uh, this is a moment of last resort. Now. This same technique, though, as if you notice, you can get this on the edge of any flat surface. All right? And this makes for a really cool opportunity to place this in some surprising places and surprising angles. Check this out. You can actually even get one on this little pole here if you wanted to. Okay? Making this extremely tough to creep under and around. Be creative, guys. Be creative. All right. That's all I got for you today. So to recap... Uh, I'm going to go back to the original location and I will talk again one more time about this setup in defense to make sure that you get it right. Alright, so I'm back at the front end of my base. Again, one more time, three evenly spaced mines, okay, on the top part of the platform, one camera, specifically like for my base we're lethal here so it's a gun camera. Uh, right above them, okay, preventing the creep underneath, crawl through, or walk through, okay. There is a mine directly underneath this platform, right about there, okay, directly placed between the pipes and the rail. And then, thanks again, Nathan Mayers. One mine on the edge, two mines on the platform, one camera overlooking it all, or two, but the, that last camera is optional. You could put it over here on either one of the edges, okay? Making it really tough to try to get around, all right? So, uh, guys, uh, that is it for this video. This is the tightest defense that I've seen for a lot of different reasons. The only way to grease your way through this is to have practice, practice, practice. And let me tell you, the guy who does that and gets through all of this, I mean, they've pretty much earned it. Uh, whatever they steal out of your base. The, it takes a very well-practiced attacker to get past all of this. Uh, also, there is one other way past all these mines and that camera, but that anything that makes a person do some acrobatic insanity is good for you and bad for them. Uh, and that method involves me doing like a run slide here to catch onto the edge. It really, I've never managed it. <laughs> it takes practice, like I said, that I'm not really willing to put in. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found that this makes your base uh, stronger and tougher to defend. Uh, since I've put in these defenses and gotten the feedback from Nathan Mayers and Charlie Cruz, uh, my base has been attacked several times, and it's been successfully defended each one of those times. So I, I vouch for this setup. And also, don't take my word for it. Don't take the words of strangers. Go to your FOB and train test it out for yourself and you will see where the strengths and weaknesses of these setups are okay guys uh, you know seriously can't stress that enough do not just take it for granted uh, have fun with it but uh, but also know that uh, no system is perfect but you can definitely make a stronger defense than probably what you already have set up. If you also have any tips or tricks or things that you've noticed have worked really well for you, send them in. Let me know. I would love to give you guys the credit in my video and find better and uh, more exciting techniques on how to defend that base. Uh, but like I said, guys, this is one tight setup. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time.